and at the time they had recorded at uh at a uh, jam downs recording jam studio down, yeah you know what i'm saying which was on telephone road and and griggs it's still uh still there if i'm not mistaken but um so we were over there that's where we shook hands so you know and i had my keyboard and so it's like i just went into that right there and i'm starting to show for what i got and he starts putting you know his his thing to it which was always what I wanted because he was more with the drum. He knew how to do the drums, you know what I'm saying? And I was more of the melody, you know what I'm saying, and samples. I mean, and, and when I mean samples, like movie samples and stuff like that, I like to put movie samples in my in my stuff. So it was a perfect, it was like, okay, it felt good. It felt back, you know what I'm saying? One of the first songs we did was, um, oh, my God, I just lost it. I had it in the top of my head. Uh, Free World. The first song we did is we, uh, we were at an apartment and Brady's, no, we were at an apartment in something lakes out by uh, uh, Almeda Road anyway. And um, and Filetto was, we went over there and we made that beat together. And it's a, it was an old uh, sample that we slowed down. We pretty much screwed it. You know, it was the same, it was the same sample that Dr. Dre had used in one of his songs. And we just slowed it down to where you, it was almost unrecognizable and you could listen to it, but it's just a, a worm just, and it's just creeping down. And they, they did their verses back to back, and then they went forward and backward. You know, like whoever started it ended it. You know, so yeah. it, that's how most hated. You know, became. So most and, hate- and that and really they were like, okay, so what's gonna name be the name of the group? You know, and it was like, you know, they were we we're at the Hutex. They were at the Hutex. Remember, I had I was you know, not I was kind of in it, but not. And before they had even told you know they came up with the name. It was they did that at Hutex, and they and I said, well, what's the name of the group? And my brother's like, it's going to be called The Most Hated. I said, man, that's dope. Yeah, just the name of it alone. Man, sounds, that's dope. It gives it, yeah. I was like, hell yeah, I'm down with that shit. Yeah. Yeah. How how did you meet SPM? <laughs> I've known SPM since I was like nine, ten years old. I've known SPM, We, you know, like even when my brother and I were skateboarding and riding bikes, going to the park, you know, he lived, he lived too... He lived on the same neighborhood, just, you know, on the other side of Telephone and Reveille. So growing up, my mom is, you know, I tell this story all the time. It's like my mom and dad, or my mom mainly, because my dad, you know, he was working a lot. She would say, mijo, those two right there, and it was Billy and and Los. Those two right there, mijo, no, 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 no. Don't hang out with them. (laughs) And of course, like, you know, you don't do what your mom says, right? So you go and hang out with them. You you do the opposite. (laughs) So that's, that's how I met. Los, honestly, but as we were doing this music thing, and we were working on the first album, making the matter worse, um, he came over to my brother's house, and I remember working on the keyboard, and in the back of my, my in the back of the room, I hear this nasal ass voice, you know, rhyming, and I was like, what the fuck is that? And I look back, <laughs> and it was Carlos. You know, and he was wearing, i never forget it because he was sipping on a Mickey's, I think, you know, was, and he was wearing like a like a Freddy Krueger type shirt with red and black stripes or whatever. And he was just sitting there and he just, you know, it's a nasal ass voice. And I told my brother, I said, man, that motherfucker's got a cold ass voice, nigga. It's because that's what you want, you know, as far as, you know, in rap, you, you, your voice is, is an instrument. Yeah. As far as rap is concerned, I think. So, man, I was like, man, what is he talking about? He says, yeah, man, he wants to get in this rap game, man. He's been doing his thing. He's, he, he showed me this song. You know, it's called Revenge. That bitch is dope. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and that's when Carlos started doing his thing, you know. And we started watching. And, and, and really, me and my brother, we always felt that he was watching what we was doing because we were the first ones out there. You know what I'm saying? Even though there was other people out there. We all, all these same groups, I was talking about Mexican Captain, uh, uh, Miss Color Mafia. Well, all these groups would go to this one place in the north side, and it was called the Unicorn Ballroom. And they would have rap contests, be, you know, breakdance rap contests. And my brother would enter it on all these guys. And they, didn't, they weren't in groups or anything. They were all separate by this time. And Los would show up. And so every week you would go, and, and every week somebody new would win. Like, you know, they were being fair about it. You know, we didn't think of it that back yeah. then. It was like, oh, fool, got you this time, fool, next time. <laughs> so, you know, they were all, you know, and you, so you got to see which ones were dope. And really, that's how we all met through there because we found out, I mean, I'm, I know I'm getting off subject, but Filetto and Belasso, that same apartment complex behind that, you know, Pizza Hut on Shimmy Rock, well, Slinky lived there. 
in that same apartment we didn't know until one night coming from the uniform, hey, oh, y'all live here? Man, Fletto and them live right there, you know what I'm saying? So, and that's kind of where the beginnings of, yeah. of, you know, knowing who each other were, you know what I'm saying? And then Prankster lived in, uh, uh, in Deuce Ward. So, and, and that's like where my family's from. I came up from Magnolia, Deuce Ward, all in that area, navigation, you know what I'm saying, and canal. And so, and then, and then you know, the guys, Troublemaker and, 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 and um, you know, Loco they're, and Big C, they were from, uh, they were from uh, Pasadena. So it was like a congregation, and, and we all started seeing each other, including Los. You know, we started seeing more of him out there. Okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? And we started doing some stuff. And remember, like I said, I wasn't an aggravated member. And aggravated members, they used to have a, a, a meeting every Tuesday at my brother's house. And there was a, a point in time where Carlos, and, he, and I think he's writing, I talked to him not too long ago, and we were talking about this ourselves, and, and he might put in his book, and, say, and he was saying that he, he, he wanted to be an aggravated member at one time. And so this one weekend, they allowed him to go with the aggravated group. And, and he had his, uh, uh, you know, that, that EP where he had Revenge on one side. And I think he had The Wizard of OZ on the other side. And he was, you know, that was this little, you know, coming out, right? Yeah. And he went with them to Dallas, you know, to go do, you know, some shows and promote and stuff. And apparently, from what I understood, like I said, I wasn't there. <laughs> But the the story goes is that Los was out there promoting and selling all his stuff. You know, what I'm saying it wasn't even you know, like banging. You know, you know, I'm aggravated. You know, what I'm saying like you want to be in the group, but you you know you you doing your thing. You know, what I'm saying so. Why don't you just stay doing your? It was like a mutual agreement. They didn't kick him out the group, but they didn't you know you know diss him like say you can't be part of the group. They just figured that that would just be you know. Yeah, you got your own thing going. Well, the day that they were having that meeting. To, to, to make that decision, I'm in front of my brother's house, and I'm jamming this beat, right? And I'm in my Regal, and I'm jamming. And I had a sunroof, right? So I had the music blaring. And here comes Carlos, you know what I'm saying, walking down. Cause we all lived in the same neighborhood, and he's walking down the street. And I'm looking. I see him coming up the block. And I said, damn, there goes Carlos, man. And I, so I hunk at him. I say, what's up? What's up, Carlos? And I come in and stuff. And he gets in my car, and he's like, man, what's this shit? You're jamming, dog. And I was like, man. It's a song I, uh, I started working on. It's called The Warriors. You know what I'm saying? And and um, remember, this is before we even, I'm still working on it. And it's for my brother's, you know, Brown Recluse album. Oh, yeah. And he spit, he was, let me, and he started, he had this rhyme with him. And he started spitting this rhyme. He's like, MC Torturer, Rhyme Sorcerer, what we, uh, it's like he just, yeah. and I was like, Hey man, shit, you want to put that on this? You know what I'm saying? He's like, ah, gee, I just, I just fuck around. You know what I'm saying? Nah, nigga. I said, I tell you what, man. Whenever I record this song, I want you to be on it. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? Never thought of it, but then when he, so this is the first song that I work with him, right? So then, all that happened with the aggravated thing, and now we're working on the most hated album, and we're at Jam Down. And the first song I work on, I wanted it to be a click song. The first song I work on, I said, man, I want to work on, the, well, the first song that we worked on was Free World. But the first song we recorded at Jam Down was Warriors. Warriors. You know? And and I called, and I told my brother, I said, hey, man, I want Carlos to come on this album. And at first it was supposed to be the uh, us first. It was supposed to be us first, the, the members first, and then people after, you know, like a click song. But then I told him, I, always, I wanted Carlos to come out first because that verse was hard. Yeah. So I said, hey, why don't we try uh, letting everybody else go first? <laughs> and then, then, then we'll be the, like the headliner of the song. We'll, you'll be last. Paul, you'll be last or whoever. You know what I'm saying? And, and Paul was like, yeah, okay, that's dope. So I said, hey, Los, come over, man. We're going to record that, that Warrior song. And he came. And I, I, somewhere there's video of it. A friend of mine named Flip has it. I you know, need to get with him. But maybe hopefully he still has it. But there's video of it, and he's inside Jam Down, and he's and he's doing that verse, MC Torture, and that's how. That was the very first song that me and uh, you know, like, even though I knew him in the neighborhood, musically, entertainmentally, that was my first time working with him, and that yeah. was like, to me, that was a shit. You know what I'm saying? I think I think that song to me did the same thing it did that the Revenge did. It just made him more, you know, it just made him out there even more. Yeah. Um what was your favorite song working with SPM? Uh, probably that one. Well, no, I say High So High. High So High. Yeah, definitely High So High. Yeah, High So High because of how it happened. I mean, it just happened 
so quick. So we're there at, at uh, uh, that's a funny ass story. So we're there at, at Dope House, right? We already got our albums done, you know what I'm saying? And we had already, and, and little Kiki had, had uh, became a label mate with us. Because we were the first, we were on that label first before Kiki. We're on Jam Down, and Jam Down signs Little Kiki. So Little Kiki comes to Jam Down, and he does that South Side. He he records the Don't Mess with Texas in front of my eyes, man. And man, it was beautiful because I mean that's where we got to meet and be around everybody from C Note to Screw to you know you know all the legends. You know what I'm saying? They all we were there. We were right there because. It, you know, because of Little Kiki, you know, Hershwood Hardheads and, and, you know, it wasn't the South Park Coalition. It was a different, it was a, it was a, well, we didn't know it at the time, but it ended up being the, the legendary screwed up clique. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And we, and we were right in the middle of it. You know what I'm saying? It was dope. And one day, Carlos goes, uh, well, I'll take it to you. This one Monday, I tell my brother, hey, man, I got a song and it's, uh, uh, it's got a hook. I always do hooks with my song and I showed it to him. I gave it to him. Well, later on that day, I went to uh, um, uh, Shut Him Down, which is Catch Square Records at the time, uh, Catch Square Records, and I showed the same song to Ike Man. I said, I got this song with a hook. Check it out. It's dope. Well, the same day, the same day, I'm going, I'm, I, I went to Jam Down, and there's uh, little Kiki and them. They're playing, they used to bet $100 playing Madden, and there used to be some battles, so I, used to, I was just there just chilling. Los walks in. You know what I'm saying? And he's sipping another, you know, I don't know why. He was sipping a Heineken. I remember this day like it was, and it was a, it was a warm Heineken. He said he drinks his beer warm. <laughs> so he tells uh, the CEO of Jam Down, which was Patrick Lewis and Vincent, rest in peace, Vincent. And he tells Patrick Lewis, he says, I'm going to have the biggest record company in Texas. And Patrick Lewis, he's from the Caribbean, you know what I'm saying? And he's, you know, sitting there in his Caribbean voice. He's like, ah, come on, Carlos. You're nothing but a... <laughs> comedian rapper you know and carlos just looked at him like and he gave him his this notorious wink that carlos has you know and i was like and he when he walked out you know he kind of looked at me and gave me that same wink and i was like oh shit you know what i'm saying I, i'm not when i seen that and i said you know i'm all about raza right i followed him outside and he's in his cousin's uh, green grand prix souped up and he has two pit bulls in the back that he had just bought, Plex and Piglet, and 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 they threw up all over the back seat of his car. Oh, come on. <laughs> he's out there scooping it. This is a true story. He's out there scooping it, and while he's doing that, I'm like, say, man, I got this song. I just, man, it's got a hook. <laughs> I know it's not the right time for this. You know what I'm saying? But... And he's like, no, he goes, for real? I said, yeah, man, in fact, man. He goes, well, what you want to do? You know what I'm saying? I said, man, come on, man. I want to, let's work together. So he had the compound, which was on Hemp Hill and Washington, you know, behind the Salvation Army in, 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 in uh, downtown. He says, meet me at the compound. I was like, all right, cool. So I go to the what ends up being the dope house, right? So I go over there. Please don't blow my high. And that's all I had. I said, and he was like, so he started writing to it. And he tells me, go ahead and dump it. So I started dumping it. Because he had a little studio already. So I started dumping it. When I started dumping it, he had already, by the time I finished, he had already had the verse. And so he starts spitting his verse. Well, damn, get in the studio. And he goes in there and he starts recording. Next thing you know, he's done. That same day, he puts out an ad in the paper says, I need a singer. So the next, the following day, okay, was Tuesday. You know, he puts the ad out. Wednesday, this, uh, no, I'm sorry, Tuesday, he puts the ad out, and they and three girls show up. A, a girl was way too young. Another girl who kind of came with her, with her mom or dad, and Carlos was like, I don't want to deal with the parents, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And then the, the other one was Marilyn, and she was this tall, beautiful black girl, and she ended up singing the hook, you know? And she did a just a smash job. Carlos was yeah. like, yep. And I don't know why, but he was just trying to get it done so fast. So anyway, we get it done on Wednesday. And it's Wednesday night, late, late at night. But Club AM is open after hours. It's an after hours club. And Kool-Aid, DJ Kool-Aid from uh, uh, Overdose and Kool-Aid, Chopaholics, he was the DJ there. And Carlos goes, come on, let's go. Right, where are we going? Go test it out. So we went over there, and Kool-Aid plays it. And the, the, he had did it at a time where the, the, the dance floor was empty. And uh, he goes, ah, you know, he, he waited. I guess he, he had perfect timing. And he put it on, and it, and it just filled up the, you know, that he had said, dude, this is a new uh, bumping song by, you know, South Park Mexican. Tell us how you like it. Boom. 
bump, 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 bump. And it just had a dance feeling. So everybody hit the dance floor and it was just on fire. So I said, you know, so I was like, I was, I was on a high. So I go home, you know, saying whatever. Next day in the morning, I wake up. It's about noon, maybe 11 o'clock, and I'm coming. I'm going to the compound because now I ain't going to jam down, right? I'm going, yeah. to, I'm going to Dope House. I sold, I, I, sold that, I sold that song to him. He, you know, he, bought, he gave me $1,000, you know what I'm saying, for that track. And I'm on the Pierce Elevated going on, going to get exit off Houston Avenue to go to the Dope House. And uh, I hear, you know, on 100.7, homie Marco's like, uh, yeah, that was that song right there for South Park Mexican. If you haven't heard that song, it's called High So High. And here it goes again. And he played it back to back. Again. And I hear boom, 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 boom. And I'm on like, what the? So I'm like, oh, my God. So now I'm going, I'm racing down Washington. I get to the dope house. And, and Carlos was just kicking back. He had this way of leaning himself on the, you know, he was just kicking back. And he was just looking at me. I drove up and I was just like, my radio blaring, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, dude, man, it's going down, you know what I'm saying? He was like, hell yeah, dude, it's fixing to start. And he looked at me, he goes, get ready, because you're going to be in the studio for the next <laughs> six weeks. Because now we put the cart before the horse. We put the single out, and we ain't got no album. I was like, oh, shit. So here we are, you know, I, he says, man, get ready, you know what I'm saying? And, and that's where the music life started taking me away from my family. Because oh, now I was like, I was like, shoot, I caught that bug. I'm going to chase this dream, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to... It was on the radio. I was like, ooh, you know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, that whole, next thing you know, we were like VIPs. You know, it's weird. It was a weird-ass feeling. So I would say that that was the most fun song. Also because my brother and Ike, like when they heard that song on the radio, they are like, you fucked me, bro. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, nah, man. I sold you that song. You only gave me. But Lowe's jumped up. And I don't think anybody else could have probably taking that song any further than and they know that now you yeah. know what i'm saying because his style his voice fit perfect yeah. on there i had even showed it to kiki he probably don't even remember that but that day i should when carlos came, i was at jam down i was i was gonna show kiki the song you know what i'm saying i did show it to him but he probably played man i don't know but he probably you know but i'm glad that it, you know it ended up being carlos doing that song and it did it's a it's a man i ain't gonna lie it's a cheesy song you know what i'm saying like even when i hear it today i'm like man it, it's not like uh fat pats you know you know, drop, you know, top, you know what I'm saying? Or it's not like a south side to me. It's just, you know, kind of weird. Bum, yeah. bum, bum, bum. But it did what it had to do. It got us, It got Carlos into the, the mainstream. Uh, got him on Heat Seekers on Billboard. And to see it, you know, go that fast like a bullet, like they say, number one with the bullet, it, that's why it was so fun. Yeah. That's why so, it was so fun. So you touched on this earlier. You know how you said you, you guys would argue and stuff like bump heads. With Dope House, uh, you know, they acquired obviously you as a producer. Right. They had Happy P. Mm -hmm. uh, Filetto was producing, you know, yeah. and then SPM yeah. made his own beats as well. Right. How was it all of y'all in the same studio? Like, was it hard working together? Was it times where like, hey, how come my tracks on top, it's not on top of the never. album? Never, never, never. I there was never any animosity between the producers. You got to remember, Filetto was working on on with with uh, Carlos on Hustle Town, so he was there before me. You know, as far as that's concerned, he yeah. worked with Carlos a little bit more before, you know, before the third. I was the third. I came in the third wish. But, you know, Happy P, Filetto, Payne. Uh, we had other people like Silos. Uh, we had uh, Dirty Work, Pete Dirty Work. Rest in peace, Pete Dirty Work from San Antonio. Um, we, had, we, had a, we had a bunch of them. I don't want to leave anybody out, but we had a lot of different producers and none of us ever had any problem, uh, you know, jockeying for you know who was going to get noticed more or what songs really it was like you it was competition in the sense that you wanted to put out the best dope you wanted to be you know put out a banger like i when i came out with follow follow my lead was another beat that was kind of stolen like like i had made that beat you know for for shut them down and actually i had sold it already and i get to the studio and and baby bash and lucky had just dropped their verse on my i said like, hey 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 what I sold that beat already, dog. And Carlos was like, well, where'd you make that beat? I made it right here. So anything you made here at the Dope House stays here. I'm like, ah, oh, this, <laughs> this, this nigga here, man. You know what I'm saying? And he had some people from Universal coming and seeing the thing, and he kind of put me on the spot, and, you know, and I didn't like it. But I ain't going to lie. Carlos came up to me after they left, and he's like, man, you know, you know, 
I'm sorry. You know, he didn't apologize. He did apologize. He was like, I'm sorry I showed you out like that. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, we got to let, we can't make any wrong moves right now. And, and, you know, I wasn't about to let that happen. You know what I'm saying? I want them to see this and that. And I was like, cool, you know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't tripping. Plus, when I heard the song, you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, that bitch is slamming. Well, remember on that Purity album, uh, there was other songs out there. And, and I remember, um, hearing it and it was like a street banger it didn't hit the radio you know my name hit the radio and that was not even any of us you know that wasn't happy or anybody i think the person that made i can't remember his name but he made beats for bones Thug, thugs and harmony and that's who gave you know my name beat and and we were like that's that's the shit so it went on the radio but as far as like the streets yeah. as far as what everybody was banging in the parking lot it was follow my lead. That be Knox. Because it just knocks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Follow my lead. Uh, made it. So, yeah, you know, and, and we'd be out there and, and Happy would be like, man, that bitch is, you know, banging. So we, so he was like, I, I, you know, he, I knew he wanted to make something bigger and better than that, and which he did. You know what I'm saying? So it was always a competition of who was going to make the most banging beats. Yeah. You know so, what I'm saying? So to my understanding, you introduced Happy P to Lowe's. Well, uh, I, in a sense, yes, because like I seen him, or he saw me at Holla Blues coming out of Holla Blues, and he knew it was funny that he knew who I was because I I knew who he was from the from the uh, how you do that there uh, beat, yeah. and I was like happy, and I was like he was like shadow, and I was like yeah what's up? He goes say man, he was in his green Tahoe, I'll never forget that, and then he was like hey uh, I wanna I wanna meet you know see if I can hang out with y'all, I wanna I wanna hook up with you and Carlos, and I want I wanna see you know. And I was like, cool, you know, whatever, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? I gave him the address or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And I don't say, I, some people will say that I introduced him, but he did it pretty much on his own. He, 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 was, look, he was seeking, you know, him. So he was talking to other people too. Like, I think he even went up to my brother or some other people. But he got involved with the Happy. Years later, one time, Happy was like, I didn't think you were going to even let me go up to those because... In the cutthroat business as being producers, yeah. he's from the boot, right? And he was used to, you know, producers being that way. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I'm not trying to talk down, but that's what he told you. He was like, I didn't think you were going to, you know, introduce me because, you know, I was going to, you know, get in your shine. Or I said, yeah. man, bro, I've never been about that. This has never been about money. It's all about Rasa coming up. You know what I'm saying? You're Mexican. If you can help us become bigger and stronger, why, why would I... Why would I, I that, you know what I'm saying? That yeah. wasn't my motive. That wasn't my, what I was trying to do. And look at him now. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And he did that his own. He, I mean, he's just a beast. He's a savage. 